In the furniture production problem, we have a limited number of small parts, represented by Lego bricks, from which we can build tables and chairs. Our model instance looks like this. We want to maximize the revenue, given that each table can be sold for 16 euros and each chair can be sold for 10 euros. Maximize 16 times the number of tables plus 10 times the number of chairs. Six 2x4s are available, hence the number of used 2x4s must be less than or equal to 6. Two times the number of tables plus one times the number of chairs is less than or equal to 6. Likewise, the number of used 2 by 2s must be less than or equal to 8. 2 times the number of tables plus 2 times the number of chairs is less than or equal to 8. And finally, the number of tables and chairs cannot be negative. T is greater than or equal to 0 and C is greater than or equal to zero. Imagine now that an additional part type, a 2x6, can be used and suppose that four of them are available. With this new part we can create a new type of furniture, a lounger. That looks like follows. Loungers are sold for 9 euros each. Note that we have modified our problem now. How would a corresponding model look like? This modeling exercise is not too hard. Give yourself a try and pause the video now. Let's have a look at a model formulation for the new situation. The objective function remains to be maximizing the revenue. All we have to do is we have to consider loungers too. Let L denote the number of loungers. Maximize 16 times T plus 10 times C plus 9 times L. Note that we need one 2x4 for each lounger. The capacity constraint for the 2x4s must be modified to take this into account. Two times T plus one times C plus 1 times L is less than or equal to 6. In a similar manner, the capacity constraint for the 2 by 2s must be updated. 2 times T plus 2 times C plus 1 times L is less than or equal to 8. And finally, we have a new part, the 2x6. Since the number of 2x6s is limited, we now need a capacity constraint for this part too. Note that this part is not needed for tables and chairs, 
but for the loungers. One times L is less than or equal to four. Don't forget the non-negativity constraints to specify the domains. T is greater than or equal to zero. C is greater than or equal to zero. And L is greater than or equal to zero. At this point, we can think about our way of formulating a model. What would happen if we modified the situation by adding more and more types of furniture? Well, we would need more and more symbols for the decision variables because each type of furniture is represented by one unique variable. Sooner or later, we would run out of good ideas for names for the decision variables. For this reason, it is common practice to use the same name for decision variables which have the same function. In our application, we only have one single type of variables and all of them represent a number of pieces of a particular type of furniture. So instead of T, C and L, let's use X1, X2 and X3. The model would look like this then. Sixteen times x one plus ten times x two plus nine times x three subject to two times x one plus one times x two plus one times x three is less than or equal to 6. 2 times x1 plus 2 times x2 plus 1 times x3 is less than or equal to 8. 1 times x3 is less than or equal to 4. x1 x2 x3 greater than or equal to 0. The variable x stands for the number of pieces that are produced. And the indices 1, 2 and 3 represent a type of furniture. Of course we have to keep in mind that the index 1 stands for tables, 2 for chairs and 3 for loungers. The benefit of this notation is that if we added more and more furniture to our story, it would be easy to add x4, x5, x6 and so on. We are very flexible in this way. Now let's go one step further. What would change in a model if the price of a table was 20 instead of 16? We would have to change one single number at this particular position then. What would be different if the number of available 2x4s was 10 instead of 6? Well, we would have to edit the number here. What if the design of the table was modified and we used 3 2x2s for a table? All we would have to do is to replace this number with a 3. What if the number of types of furniture was different? We have discussed this before when loungers were introduced. We would use an appropriate number of x variables then. And what if the set of small parts in our story was different? This we have seen when we introduced the 2x6s. The number of capacity constraints would change correspondingly. All these modifications are very easy because the structure of the problem remains the same. Basically, what we do is we change the values of some parameters. It is therefore very useful to formulate a general model that represents the structure of the problem 
whenever you are interested in a particular class of problems which have a common structure. In such a general model, you would use names for the parameters instead of numbers. Let's see how this looks like in our case. Let f be the number of types of furniture and p1, p2 and so on be the price for a particular type of furniture. In its general form, the objective function looks like this. p1 times x1 plus p2 times x2 plus and so on until pf times xf. Let n be the number of small parts under consideration and let b1, b2 and so on be the available number of parts of type 1, 2 and so on. Let a11 be the number of parts of type 1 that are required to produce one piece of furniture 1. a12 the number of type 1 parts needed to produce one piece of furniture 2 and so on. In its general form the capacity constraints look like follows. a11 times x1 plus a12 times x2 plus and so on a1 f times xf is less than or equal to b1 a21 times x1 plus a22 times x2 plus and so on a2f times xf is less than or equal to b2 and so on a n1 times x1 plus a n2 times x2 plus a n f times x f is less than or equal to b n. It should be emphasized that some of these a values might be zero to indicate that not every part is required for every furniture. Finally, the domains. Note that, like with decision variables, we have used the same name for parameters that have the same function. P1, P2 and so on are prices. B1, B2 and so on are part availabilities and the A's are production coefficients. By the use of the sigma sign for summation, the general model can be couched in a very compact way.
Note that the index i right next to the constraint means that the copy of the constraint is included in the model for every value i in a specified range.